Welcome to the Business of Design podcast. I'm Cheryl Horn, Director of Operations at BOD. In today's episode, I've actually taken over the mic to interview Marla Baker, someone we consider part of Team BOD. Marla is a business development specialist and recognized design community advocate with a large network and following. She's known as a bit of a matchmaker in the industry as Marla connects the design industry with brands, events, educational seminars, and conferences that are meaningful to them. And she's certainly done that for business of design over the last couple of years. Marla has an extensive knowledge of the industry and has connections with trade shows, associations, events, and conferences, which is an area I often get questions about from our community. So before we get into the show, I'm going to do some very quick announcements since I'm going to be sticking with you for the rest of the episode. Uh, Next week, November 15th, is the deadline to get in on early bird pricing for the BOD 15 in Sydney, Australia, hosted by Boyd Blue. If you're interested, please get your tickets now. It's not every day that Business of Design gets to travel to Australia. It's going to be an an intense two-day seminar that you really don't want to miss. Also happening next week, November 16th, is BOD Live, and we're going to be talking about managing discounts. It seems to be a really hot topic within our member community. I'd say over the last year, even, uh, during our commercial project seminar in September, Kimberly was almost convinced to try things a different way by one of our members who was on the call, and she's going to join us for next week's BOD Live to help kickstart that conversation. But it does seem to be a bit of a a debate, and people are doing things different ways, and we just want to have that conversation. So join us next week. And then lastly, but certainly not least, is the BOD Elite Retreat Charleston, which is happening April 27th to 30th, 2023, but registration is happening now. We are working on the final details of our itinerary, but we have gotten a lot of interest and registration over the last couple of weeks as our two boss groups got together for their meetings, and we love that they plan their April meetings in line with the retreat as so many of them want to do both. So if you want to come hang out with Team BOD, some of our boss members, and of course, connect with other BOD members who are looking to strengthen their business and get inspired, please consider joining us and really don't wait. You want to register early. Details on all of these events and more are at businessofdesign.com. And by all means, if you've got questions on any of them, please reach out to me, Cheryl at businessofdesign.com. Thanks so much. Welcome to the Business of Design podcast with Kimberly Selden. Business of Design is the world's best business training for interior design professionals like you. We have the systems, strategies, and protocols you need to consistently satisfy clients, increase profitability, and run your projects like a boss. Unlike traditional coaching, BOD is a fast track to immediate results. Don't try to do this alone. Join today and you'll have access to hundreds of targeted training modules, plus member perks like BOD Live events, member-only podcasts, preferred pricing, and the support of an engaged community of peers. We all know design matters. At Business of Design, we think designers matter too. Hi, Marla. How are you? Hi, Cheryl. I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm good. Uh, Thank you so much for agreeing to do this. We kind of thought this would be a good interview for me to do because you and I actually talk and email almost weekly, right, for over a year now since Business of Design sort of engaged your services. We do, and it's a pleasure. I love working with you and Kimberly and the team. It's been such a great experience. Yeah, well, you and I go back a year, but you started working with Kimberly uh, long before that, I believe. Do we have to go back that far? (laughs) I have known the wonderful Kimberly Selden for for quite a long time. Uh, We first met Uh, when I was mostly engaged with trade shows and um, hiring talent like Kimberly to really represent uh, design and bring that into the show to really inspire, you know, homeowners to understand designers, their point of view and the type of work they could do. And Kimberly and I met doing that years ago, and we've always stayed connected. Yeah, and it was it was more recently that you sort of did that with Kimberly again. So for any of our listeners who have 
come out to one of the uh, live events, because those are happening now, uh, that Kimberly's done in the last year. I know she's gotten to see so many of our uh, community and our members out there, but if you've attended IDS or um, what's new, what's next in New York, um, even some private uh, brand events, if you've come out and seen Kimberly speak, uh, you've been <laughs> you've been the brains behind uh, connecting us with all of those uh, events and brands that's gotten Kimberly in front of those audiences. Well, thank you. It's been a pleasure doing that and so wonderful that we're back in person again and really able to bring the design community together because it's, you know, it's been needed and it's really been embraced. And IDS, for people that don't know, is the interior design show here in Canada, in Toronto, and it really is an inspiring and um, very well known and popular North American uh, trade and consumer show. And I was able to bring in some of my luxury partners um, to support bringing us all together and engaging with the design community. And, and Kimberly connects the dots so well to make it meaningful for the design community. We're not just looking to sell people product, we're looking to um, really engage with them and teach them and inspire them and, you know, just really be there for the design community, helping them every day and growing their businesses. Well, I know you are such an advocate for the design industry. Maybe you can touch on that a little bit. I get the, now that things have opened up, I get the question a lot of, from designers of wanting to network, wanting to meet other designers uh, locally and build that sort of support network. And these events are how you do it, but not all designers are going to walk in there and walk right up to somebody else uh, to make those personal connections. So right. what do these events have to offer? Because I think a lot of people go in thinking it's going to be very overwhelming. They're huge events. How do you make those smaller connections? But I think so much happens at these events and there are some smaller, more private events going on and things like that. So maybe you can touch on that a little bit about the opportunities for designers when they do attend these events. Sure, because it's really important to me that the designer, that the design community and the design industry really comes together and works together and everyone benefits. So there's so many different types of events. So we could talk about um, educational events where perhaps a product, a company is bringing everybody together to teach them more about, about their brand. And it could have a CEU attached to it as well so that the designers are also getting their accreditation, which is very important. Right. And in these types of events, it's just great for designers to just ask questions in the Q&A, talk to other designers, not to be afraid to, to speak up. And I think that brings other designers together. And I've seen that happen time and time again. You know, sometimes people might be a little hesitant to ask a question or to really speak up. Maybe they don't think they're going to reveal too much about their business. But honestly, honesty is the best policy. And to, to really participate then you engage in um, conversations with other designers, with product specialists, and it brings people together. I've seen designers do that. Now you're not going to share your client list, or you know, you're, you know, you want to hold on to your your own clients, but your experiences maybe with suppliers, uh, with logistics, with recruitment. Recruitment is a big thing right now. But when designers start sharing their stories, they I become united. And I've seen like groups of three or four designers maybe winding up sharing office space together because they've become um, a group, a network, a community, and they've been able to build trust with each other and really um, make it a, a better experience than just being on their own. So I've seen things like that happen and I've seen that happen through conferences. And then there's also private events. I was you know, just at an event last, last night and designers come and talk to me because they know me and, and, you know, I'm outgoing and I'm able to introduce them. But as soon as a few of the introductions are made, I, last night I saw the designers all networking and, and talking um, together and sharing experiences and learning from each other. And I think that that is really important. So don't be afraid to, to talk, to, to network, to, you know, if you do see your sales rep there, have your, you know, talk and find out who's there. And just try to elevate that experience so that you're really getting everything you can out of being at that event. 
Well, and I think a lot of these larger shows do sort of have those two different opportunities. There's the big main stage where you're in a group with hundreds of designers. And then there's the smaller, like you said, CEU options where it maybe is a smaller room and you're sat at the table with five other designers and you have a lot more time to make that one-on-one connection. Well, that's the beauty of shows. So, you know, you, you do have the private events, but with shows like even at What's New, What's Next in New York, it's it's the same thing. There could be micro micro events at different showrooms, but at a trade show, like you said, there could be like the keynote speakers that are on the main stage on the show floor, but then there's the seminar breakout rooms where people can really um, dig deep and, and get some really good learning in there. But that's why the trade shows, conferences, independent events that are happening through showrooms, all those things are a great way to really be in the know and also be seen. Perhaps some of the designers um, want to promote themselves and become a speaker. And the best way to do that is really be present and um, pick up tips, pick up tips from the people that speak. Not everyone is an, is an amazing, accomplished speaker like Kimberly. And Kimberly does have television background too, but I've worked with many designers and helped them become a really effective speaker. Maybe they start on a panel. And they start as a panelist and then maybe they grow to be giving their own their own seminars. So I, I, I think it's really important because a lot of these, if we're going back to trade shows, a lot of the trade shows will have trade days and consumer days. So maybe the designer does want to contribute to the design community and speak to other designers representing a brand or being um, or being like being a brand advocate or the brand being a sponsor but maybe they also want to speak on a consumer day and uh, really connect with the audience. And, you know, you could pick up leads that way, but I, I think it's, it's a really great way to help designers uh, propel themselves and shows are always looking for new talent. Shows are always looking for designers that have experience and want to just be honest and 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 give their story. They they love that, and it's not that easy, that hard to do because many of these shows, um, for speaking opportunities, have a call for speakers, and all you have to do is put in your application. You know, certainly talking to someone like myself. You know, I'm sure there there's other people out there that that are design community advocates that could help guide. But um, I think it it's a bit of an untapped market. We all go on social media. We all promote ourselves on Instagram, but this is a different way to do it and, and hit a really great audience. Well, and I think we do have a lot of uh, listeners, and I know Business of Design members, at least that I've spoken with directly, uh, who do have that interest. They want to build themselves as an expert um, for, I think, two different reasons. Like you said, uh, for the potential for clients. They want to speak to consumers, and they want to get in front of that audience. Um, but then there's a lot who see it almost as a different revenue stream, right? To do the speaking engagements um, and become an expert within the industry itself. So for somebody who doesn't, you know, have Kimberly's background, we're very lucky where, you know, we get approached or you get approached on our behalf uh, to do opportunities like this. But what about those designers who they have an established business and this is sort of a next step for them? What would sort of be some first steps if that was something you were thinking about doing? Well, I think attending the conferences and, you know, learning from the speakers that are, are presenting and just talking about your niche, what sharing your experiences of what has has made you successful is very relatable. So, of course, it's about the projects and and the work that you've done and you have you would have opportunity to show pro, um, past projects and all of that. But the show's and conferences are looking for new and original content. So I think being in the know, getting out there, seeing what's doing, and then maybe taking a step back and just, just again, thinking about what you what inspires you and what you can contribute. And I honestly do think that starting, if you are looking to, to do the speaker circuit and, and become an accomplished speaker, starting as a panelist. So um, a lot of the times the shows will be looking to, to put that together or specialists like myself will be looking to put that together. 
So you could do a reach out saying again with the call for speakers, all these shows have a call for speakers. And what you'd be able to do is just say you'd like to be part of a panel. This is how, this is the topic that I'd like to, to, to look at. And the shows do list what their learning tracks are and you know what they're inspiring that conference to be. So I would say like if you were looking to uh, speak at the interior design show, so that's in January. I would I would go down to that show, take a look at, at what the conference looks like and talk to the organizers. You know, you could talk to the organizers right there at the show. And then the call for speakers for the following year typically goes out um, a few months after the show. So like if you're in March, April, that's when you could start planning for speaking in January. And there, there's lots of other ways to do it. If you're a member of an association, there's so many associations out there. They're always looking for content. Anybody, any type of, of association from the National Kitchen and Bath Association to Builders Associations to Design and Decorator Associations, all of their local chapters are always looking for inspiring things for meetings, for lunch and learns. We even do dinner and learns now. Uh, but you could start by doing that. And maybe at first there wouldn't be a speaker fee attached, like maybe you wouldn't get paid at first, but then eventually you would. And um, it's it's just great marketing value. And I think that it it's an untapped market that um, I help, you know, the designers that I work with all the time do that. And, you know, I'm working on a conference right now that I have three different seminars and they're all panels and you know I've included a lot of the designers that I work with and uh and you know this will be a very successful thing so I think it's 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 a great idea to to tap into well and I think moving away from the larger conferences um you also work to connect uh design professionals with brands and I know um you've also done private events for specific brands that are invite only. And I think that speaks to, uh, you know, the level of your business potentially that you provide to that supplier, things along the, those lines in order to be invited to those types of events and connect with other uh, designers as well there. So how would a design professional get on those exclusive invite only lists? That's a, that's a great question. And um, what's been successful for me in my career is that I have come as a sales specialist working for luxury brands for years. Okay. I have that event background too. It makes me a little unique and that's how I get brought in to connecting the design community with events. And I have the understanding different than a publicist because I've been a sales rep, I've been an educational resource, I'm inspired by the design community and I'm, I'm like the feet on the street. Anybody could wine and dine groups of designers, but what the, what the luxury brands want to do is really make the designers that specify their brand and have been good to them, they want to give them an experience that they don't normally get. They don't just want to throw money at some event. They want to have a meaningful experience, connect the dots, and not, not waste anyone's time. We're all busy. We, you know, designers could be going to meetings, at, client meetings at night. We understand you're paid by the hour, and it's, it's, it's a great rate per hour, especially if you're listening to business of design. <laughs> but um, what, what I'm getting is, at is that we understand that Time, time is money. And if we are going to bring you to an event, we want that event to be inspiring and, and a great event. And so how do you get invited? So I think that you just be loyal to those brands that that um, that you work with. You know, I, I think that we all know the brands that are that are great out there, the brands that do events, do parties, and, you know, reach out to your sales rep, you know, the people that are updating your samples, ask them what's, what, what's going on. I'm, I'm sure that they probably do already invite you if you're supporting their brand, but you have to go, <laughs> you know, you have to go. And even if you just stop in for an hour, if that's what you do, you just go in for that hour. You make sure you connect with the principals. You take some Instagram pictures so you can show you were there being seen and being out there is great. It doesn't mean you have to be there all night. Um, or if it's a, you know, a, a, a daytime event, just, just pop in, go, don't, don't, 
don't assume that it might be a waste of time. It, it's never, it's never a waste of time, especially now that events are back. These companies do, you know, they're doing it, they're doing it right. And it's a great experience yeah. is to go, go. <laughs> get out there now that you can for sure. And I think so many people are just dying to get out there and see people in person. And I think attending those types of events that are put on by these brands, um, it's not just about networking with other design professionals, but really um, connecting with those that you that you work with, and especially over COVID, like you're talking on the phone and that sort of thing, but you're not making those in person connections. And as much as we talk about building your A team with trades, um, you know, we always emphasize having an A team of suppliers as well. If you're stretching your business thin between twenty companies who do the exact same thing, you're not going to be on anybody's priority list. And right now, especially with delays and everything like that that's still happening throughout the industry to have um, those relationships with key suppliers, key brands that you can call in those favors, or they know who you are when the, when the phone rings and, and that sort of thing. So to have those personal touches and talk to them outside of dealing with a specific project helps to build those relationships. And then they'll come to you, especially like going back to going to those events, um, post it on social that you're there, tag them. There's usually a hashtag for, for, for the event, like, like give it back to them. And then they, they, they start seeing that you're there. They see that you're promoting. They start to see your followers. They see your work. Mm -hmm. They understand who you are and they may come to you to, to be on an advocacy board. Like they may want your opinion on what uh, what their sampling program should look like, what what lines should be brought in, what what the sustainability um, part of their business should look like. You'll see the more that you put put in um, with the through your sales rep, through the principles of the company, and create that awareness. It's going to come back to you. Well, and I think that they're also going to pay more attention when your um, actual job orders come in for certain projects as well. And they're going to tie the two together, the more that they see your name pop up. And that's what they want to see, Cheryl. They want to, they want to see the return on investment from the event that they're, they're, they're giving as well. So if you're not, you're not getting invited, you know, they're not, companies don't want to, they're not looking to, okay, I don't know if you're going to like this. Um, Companies aren't looking to buy business. They want, certainly companies are investing in new design designer business and new designer specifications. The products that you specify every day that are the great companies out there, those are the ones that you are doing business with. Those are the ones to to start with. Those are the ones to start with. Then you're going to see you're going to be getting reach out from other companies and you're going to have to decide, you know, you may want to be loyal to the brands that you specify. You may want to be checking out everything to see if maybe you want to spread things around a bit and that's okay. You're going to have to decide what works best for your business model. Well, I wanted to touch on, um, I want to say it was last year when we started working together, you know, I, I do my homework. So I did see, I want to think, I think it was in uh, living Lux magazine, maybe that you were referred to as the designer whisperer. So I know you're a huge advocate for the industry. So maybe you can talk a little bit about how designers can get more involved with the industry um, beyond, you know, attending the events and that sort of thing to really sort of make a difference and see change within our industry, what opportunities are there to contribute in that way? So again, Cheryl, I would say, ask for help, ask for help, network with other designers. Again, back to the groups of designers that I've seen that have become support networks for each other. And that goes a long way. It goes a long way for each of their businesses because they're being honest. They're not crossing lines or sharing customers but they're able to solve some some real-time issues with logistics, with new suppliers out there, with new fabric people, new wallpaper people, new like what what what's new, what's next? But um, I'm fi- I found that that works really well. And then it becomes known in the industry. Again, because I have the product side, I have the sales side, and I have the design community experience, I've been able to, to, to help connect all of that together and I'm privy to what's going on. So I know these things are happening out there. So my advice is start up, start up a, a, a group, start up, start up a network, 
talk to your to your fellow like-minded designers and what you're going to also see that happens is not only you're going to get support but the industry becomes aware because maybe you guys are all coming to an event together then that 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 um product that that company may approach you and say oh what's going on what's going on here tell me about this collaboration and they may ask you to be advocates for their on councils and give them advice for their product lines. And then there you go. Then you're able to get that change right to the first level, which is listening to the, getting it into the right ears, being in front of the right people. And I find being in front of the right people is putting yourself um, at the shows, at the conferences, at the parties, at the industry things. That's how you get there. And um, it can be a lot of fun. I find it very, very inspiring personally. And people tell me all like all the time, like, this isn't about me because I'm helping everyone. And that, 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 that's what I do, but that they wouldn't have thought of that or they would have kept it closer to themselves. And they're grateful to be able to now understand a different, a different route to get there. And they've made some very good business connections and very good relationships along the way. That's so true. I think candid sharing is one of the biggest things that, you know, I'm proud to be a part of at Business of Design. I think there's such a difference when we do these events. And I mean, you've been with to so many of them recently with Kimberly, that there's such a difference when we do an exclusive like BOD event when Kimberly asks a question to the audience, how many hands shoot up, how quick everyone is to share what they charge by the hour. And then when she gets in front of a new crowd, which is, you know, great for us. That's why we work together. Our our goal business of design is obviously to reach as many designers as we can, but there is that difference. There is that little bit of hesitation, the slower hand raising and that sort of thing. And I think as an individual designer, the best thing you can do is share what works for you, what doesn't. And, you know, everyone can learn from everyone else's mistakes and not reinvent the wheel by doing that. And these events have been, you know, a great opportunity to make those connections and share. We've seen so many smaller groups. I mean, we've, we've launched our, we're launching our second uh, boss group as we speak. And just to see everyone's, um, you know, numbers and feedback just sort of all rise as a group, you know, has been great. And then there's also smaller groups that have come out of conferences or the retreat where two or three designers just connect and they stay in touch. And that turns into a monthly Zoom call because maybe they're not all in the same city. And it just, when you're accountable to other people, you just sort of rise as a group. And these events are certainly a great way to make those initial connections. What I, and what I see is this energy, the energy, like once Kimberly gets everybody talking, yeah. that the, the energy in that is in that room is fantastic. And then it's like everybody just relaxes and then speaks, speaks freely and learn from each other. Oh, I didn't know you charge $1,200 an hour. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, I charge two fifty. dollars Like, yeah. like the, the content that comes out is very inspiring, but I think people feel very safe with Kimberly. I think designers, you have to step out of your comfort zone and, you know, become an actor or an actress for that time you're, you're at an event, but it'll benefit you in so many ways with different opportunities and it doesn't cost you anything but your time. Right. So I think it is a really, a really great way to step forward in the candid sharing. Cheryl is a big part of it. I think that's great. So, uh, well, you know, we end every episode with a design intervention, so it can be completely off topic, but what's one piece of business advice that you've gotten that you'd really like to share with others? Okay, Cheryl, I have two. (laughs) Okay. One is learn how to say no. You need to be able to pick the right jobs, the right clients, and the right opportunities. We can't say yes to everything. That's um, a big piece of advice that I was given and has served me well. And another recent piece of advice I received was in a crisis, don't over communicate. It always complicates things. And I never thought about that. Not that I'm an over communicator or not, but it's a very good piece of advice. Sometimes you just have to 
let things sit. <laughs> so those are two things that have really inspired me that I like, I wanted to share with everyone. No, that's great. Kimberly says all the time, if she has, you know, sometimes it's in relation to sharing a big number when you're asking for um, a payment from a client. Um, but also if you're delivering bad news or anything like that, sit on your hands. So when you're, you yeah. know, say what you need to say and then shut up. And if you can't do that, that's sort of like her <laughs> physical reminder to stop talking, to sit on her hands. But that's so true. Like it just, you almost talk in circles and make a situation worse as opposed to just sticking to those, to just those points. Firm. Yeah. Just stay firm. Yeah. And I know saying no is hard for some people. And the one thing I will add to that is if you aren't good at saying no, have somebody on your team who is. Yes, absolutely. And that's one of the things that, um, you know, Kimberly's shifted now that she's got me. I'm that's like my superpower saying no. Uh, and I, and I, I've found that I've, that's sort of who I've become to other clients as well, but you know, she's the one that's out there at these events and getting approached with opportunities. And she would always say yes to everything. And then I would have to backtrack that later. And now she's just sort of like, Oh, get in touch with Cheryl, get in touch with Cheryl. So that it's a no from the start because that's, it's easier to say no the first time than to set it up. And if that's just not your, strength it's just like doing doing the intake and having somebody do sales for you right if you have somebody that you can pass that skill to somebody has well, to know <laughs> yes so have, have a no person on your team for sure yeah. well thank you so much for your time today it was really great sure. to you know chat about something different we've been uh like i said we chat almost weekly so this was a fun conversation to have my pleasure thank you so much cheryl and if you want to um if members want to connect with you how can they find you they can find me at marlabaker.ca. Uh, that's and my website. And you can reach out to me that way. I'd be happy to help uh, answer questions or help to guide. It would be my pleasure. I always enjoy giving back and I truly do. So please don't be um, shy to reach out. And on Instagram, because I know you always are sharing constantly for all of the events that you're part of. So if anybody wants to stay on top of the events that are happening, what's your handle on Instagram? At Baker Marla. Perfect. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Cheryl. Talk soon. Bye. Bye. Thank you for being part of the Business of Design community and supporting BOD's mission to improve the industry one design business at a time. It's time for you to take the next step and join Business of Design. Like thousands of design professionals in 50 countries around the world, you'll find the systems, strategies, and protocols you need to dramatically improve your business and transform your life. What are you waiting for? Start today.